Mayfield back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, yes. Goal down to the Blitzer. The yes. end of the Huskies win their first state championship. From Goodrich Field on a lovely evening, it is girls lacrosse and Oka hosting Robbinsdale Armstrong, Steve Thompson, and Joe Rulin. Armstrong out of the gate, two and zero, and Oka looking for win number one early in the season. And the Noka, led by head coach Ali Heinrichs, comes in with, as you mentioned, the record 0 and 3. Last season they were 3 and 12, and uh, hoping to make some corrections. They certainly have a lot of experience. Or a few of the key players coming back this season, they have been outscored in their first three games, 13 to 39. Meanwhile, for the Armstrong, Robinsdale Armstrong Falcons at 2 and 0, they have outscored their opponents 29 to 8. They have returned some major talent on the squad this year, Steve. Yeah, and they have a huge key in this game, and that is good goaltending. Lydia College will get the start. She is a junior. Save percentage is 75%. Once again, anything over 60% in lacrosse is outstanding for a goaltender, Joe. Yep, and she was 11-4 last season in the 15 games she played in, and the goals against very stingy 6.91. Now, that was last year. Already this season, she's played in one game. Picked up the win and has a goals against of 2.0. Excellent. Excellent goalie. Meanwhile, uh, for Anoka, they're going to have to get things going with uh, some freshman talent in uh, Jaden Schultz tonight. And she is getting uh, some words of wisdom from her teammates down to our left. Anoka in white. You see Armstrong in red uh, with those blue numerals. A pleasant evening. Once again, sunshine here at Goodrich Field. And a little bit cool. I, I saw 40s on the thermometer on the way to Goodrich here tonight for the game, but it is good weather. The wind is down. I, I don't see the flags on the goal post moving at all, and we should be good to go, and we're ready for the opening face-off of the game. Girls across Armstrong visiting Anoka tonight here on QCTV. Well, it's Anoka's going to need to come out punching and very aggressive as they can ill afford to get down to this Falcon squad. Last year, this Falcon squad lost in their section finals, section semifinals to YZ, a team last year for Robinsdale Armstrong that started out with the first nine wins consecutively on the season in 2022. And they move right in front, ground ball, picked up by the Tornadoes for a moment and controlled by Armstrong. Sandra really makes it work, wearing 18, they get it in front, that goes wide. But Sandra wearing 18, she's kind of set up in the middle right now. Six goals already, there's a catch and a shot that's knocked down by the goalie Schultz. And Schultz is gonna retrieve and then send it way out to the right. And that's gonna go out of play in a turnover on the Tornadoes and that's something they cannot afford. Well, we saw last week as we watched the Andover game, uh, when they have Bach and goal, she's such a crisp and precise passer as a goalie that that Keegan triggers that offense. We got a ground ball inside, popped around. No, no one able to gain control of that. And finally, the Tornadoes are going to get it. And for Anoka, Reese Kristoff was around it. And actually, we're going to have a free position here at uh, that eight meter line. And now they're going to move it back to the 12 meter line. And this is going to be an opportunity for Bella Gorgon. One goal, no assists this year. Gorgon won't get the free position here and typically a pass out of that. And that's what she did to her left. So Armstrong on the attack here. And now another ground ball and a chance for the Tornadoes to get it out of there. Almost a turnover opportunity, and let's see if Robbins tell they do. They pick up the ground ball. Now let's see if they can take advantage. They've been able to move it ahead pretty effectively. They put it on the ground, though, and then we've got a uh, little stick play there. Kristoff knocked it away. Armstrong's going to hang on. And that, that's well outside that 12-meter line, so really no problem for the Tornadoes here. And passing out of that was Keen. Get it in the middle. 
Sandral. They get it in toward the net, blocked away by the goalie. Schultz, good job there. It's still another ground ball. So far, Anoka has been able to keep it out of the net, but Armstrong has had it in that zone, Joe. They have. They've been able to capitalize here a little right over catch the and release over the top on that uh, opportunity. Exactly. Keep in mind, Robbinsdale Armstrong last year with a record of 11 and 4. That's impressive. But they had 208 goals that they scored. And they have some of those players back here this season already. And they've started to put up some serious numbers. Falcons still in the attack zone. Send it right into the middle. And they get that one over the top and in the net. And I believe that was Poloni there. We'll see. And I think it is Poloni, number nine, getting that first goal. And if it Hello, is, that's Armstrong. her sixth of the year. Scoring for the Armstrong. Freshman, number nine, Katie Poloni. Yep, the Poloni sisters getting at it. The first one here tonight is by Katie. Aaron's she, the other. She had 11, did Katie, last season. She gets her sixth, as you mentioned, Steve, of the season. And Robbinsdale Armstrong, as I mentioned, 208 goals scored last year. And a, I believe it was a 20-2 to two win last year versus Anoka. Gets their first here tonight. Yeah, so Katie Poloni with the goal there, and she just kind of went over the top of the goaltender, Jaden Schultz. Really not much of a chance uh, for Schultz there. And here comes Poloni again right down the middle of the field. And Poloni's going to stop and get turned away and set it up outside and swing it over to the right. Pretty yeah. good rush, though, by Armstrong and winning that all-important faceoff. Well, and here's the other piece is they won those ground ball battles already. That's what sustained the possession in the Anoka end of the field. There were three occasions where Anoka had an opportunity to get possession, but the Falcons quicker to possess that ball. That's kicked out of there by the Tornadoes. They tried to get it to Keene in front, had it for a moment, and then there's a shot up high. And Anoka's going to be able to take it out of there, but that was big shot taken by Layla Alm, midfielder for Anoka and she pops right back up and, and here comes all. Yep, got to keep an eye on her. 26 goals last season for Layla Alm. She has one goal and one assist thus far. And she's already uh, committed to D2 school, Colorado College to play some lacrosse and that's a beautiful campus. Oh yeah. But you could watch her last year. We saw her a couple of times even as a freshman. She has that athleticism, that speed that really sets her apart from other players. As I mentioned, 26 goals last season. Looking for her second goal here this season. Here comes Anoka the other way, and that's Jayla Tana, midfielder, trying to get Anoka set up. They put it on the ground, picked off by Armstrong, and on that ground ball trying to come out of there was Cheyenne Oja. And they're going to send it ahead to midfield, right back on the ground at midfield. Scooping it up there was Kristoff. She'll turn the other way. Here come the Tornadoes down by one. Five minutes into the game. Kristoff, good run here. Goes to the goal line extended. It'll set up and back. Here's an opportunity for Anoka to set up, get a little zone time, get a good look. See what they can get moving and get some activity and motion going on their set. And this possession down. Got Olson right around in front. She'll circle around to the back. They get it in front to the cutter. Yelly had it go off her stick. Here come the Falcons as they move it ahead. That's Gorgon. Gorgon gives it up on her right. It's right back on the ground. A lot of ground balls early in this one. Falcons control in red. They move the other way with speed. They move right in and get a shot and a goal, but I think they're going to stop play before that shot. And I think this is going to be, this will be a free position right there at the line. And looks like number nine getting a look yeah, here. Poloni, she already has a goal. Poloni's going to get a shot. Goes down low and scores. She has two. And Armstrong extends their lead. Those are tough to track. Anything low like that, Tyrrell, the turf, tough to get that stick down. Typically, that stick is up a lot higher. And uh, get a look here at that explosive first step. Takes a look and just releases that shot low. Almost impossible to get. As you mentioned, second goal here tonight 
for Katie Poloni, her seventh of the season. 6.07, time of the goal. Armstrong leads it, and, and you're so right about that. You know, the goal is down at the shoe tops. If you can get it to skip right in front of the shoe top, uh, right in front of the, the big toes, so to speak, that makes it very difficult. Player goes down, and Oka's going to hang on it, and getting decked there was the tornado. I think that was Abby Moore who got knocked over. Armstrong right back at it. They move it down the field. Good pass there. They get it right to the front, into the middle. That shot blocked away beautifully by Schultz. That was a good run, good shot, and a nice save. Boy, it looked like she was going to put an exclamation point to the end of that rush upfield, but a beautiful save by the freshman Schultz. Armstrong's going to hang on on that shot attempt. And they get it right back in front and right over the top again. And who else? Oh, Poloni by the way. third. Oh, by the way, Katie Poloni. As I mentioned, she just she had 11 goals last season. She just picked up her eighth of the season, her third of the night. Early here in the first half. And she, she's got a great skill set, but she has tremendous length, and she's able to use that effectively again to go upstairs. Second goal, she's gone over the top. And of course, that goal a moment ago went downstairs. So she, she's, she's got a lot of skill. Yeah, defensively, you try to get over and close that avenue to shoot, but she can extend that reach and elevate that shot top shelf. Three nothing for the Falcons. 17 to two win over Blaine and a 12 to six win over Tatino Grace. That's how the Falcons have started this 2023 campaign. Armstrong ultimately gets it from the draw, and they'll move it into the attack zone. By the way, it was Brielle Anderson on the faceoff, ground ball right in front, and the Tornadoes are gonna pick it up. So Schultz has done a pretty nice job in her first start here, sends it out to the near side, and it's caught in the air by Kristoff, and sends it out to the middle, ground ball picked up there by Yelly. Yelly begins her run, and she's got an alley. She gets down to the goal line, extended in beyond, so a good run by Annie Yelly there. Two goals on the year for the senior. Now yeah. keep an eye on Amaya Olson. She can crush it. She has been here. It's some nice passes from behind the cage this season. Abby Moore put it on the ground. Armstrong comes up with another ground ball and get it right back to midfield. And they move into the attack zone. Three goals already for Katie Poloni. They send it off to the left, getting in front, turned away, moves to her right. Nice feed down to the goal line, extended out in front, down low again, another goal. Under the garage door on that low shot to beat Schultz, 4 nothing. now for the Falcons. That might have been Poloni again, or are they gonna give that goal there to Aaron Poloni? So it's a Poloni affair here tonight for Armstrong. I was going to say a Poloni party. There, but there you uh, go. they have all four goals so far. Aaron, oh, by the way, had 31 goals, 15 assists last year for this Armstrong squad. And this is their third of the season. So out there on the draw is Brielle Anderson for Armstrong. And for the Tornadoes, Layla Alm. Oka needs to win a draw, get it down the field, and change the momentum. So Katie Poloni, the first three. Such your Aaron Poloni, the junior, coming in, two goals, two assists. Now she's got three on the year. And they've been able to get in close on Jaden Schultz. Not much she's been able to do. That one popped in the air, on the ground. Can Anoka gain control? Yes, they do. And the Tornadoes in white move into the attack zone. Here's Yelly. Moves it further down. Catching there was Olsen. And she'll go behind the net. Olsen, three goals, three assists this season. Can find that opening. She's very good at uh, finding that outlet. Olsen comes out of there, greeted by a double team. Sends it right in front. That's picked off by the goalie, Lydia College. College, a good play there. Why, why let it get out in front? She caught it. Now it's all the way out to midfield. Another ground ball opportunity. Haman picks it up, sends it over to her right. Armstrong just dominated the ground balls here. 
They get it into the middle. And right in front, spinning and firing. And that is the goal, and I think that's Jenna Haman. That's a close to a one-timer. Look out for Haman, because I tell you what, she, she was explosive last year for this uh, squad, for the Falcons. In fact, uh, I had her for close to 25 goals last year for Haman. And she gets first here. She has her third now of the season. I correct, 30 goals, 31 assists last year for Jenna Haman. She picks up her first tonight, the third of the season. 8.36 time of the goal, and it's been all Armstrong here in the first eight minutes plus at Goodrich Field. Haman committed to be playing. Well, she's going to play uh, lacrosse over at Concordia University at St. Paul. She's going to join one of last year's teammates who is also there as well in um, Sydney Smith. Smith, who graduated last year from Armstrong, put up 41 goals for their team, and so she'll get a chance. It'll take another, I think, two more years. She's a junior. Schultz made a save a moment ago on an Anderson shot. Armstrong right back in front, down on the deck. That was a great opportunity for Aaron Poloni, and it ended up with the Anoka goalie, Jaden Schultz. She'll send it off to the left, turnover on the tornado. I'm not sure if Haman's going to see another ball tonight because she broke up that, uh, that Poloni party. With that, that, that goal, that's I mean, right. I'm sure, they're, she's they're, thinking of the team, but they're uh, bitter. <laughs> Let's see. What Armstrong in front. That one fanning on it, having it come out of the stick. Schultz picks it up, and Anoka will maintain. But they, they've pass. been able to get it right in front, Joe. They haven't. Here's the key to this outlet pass, right? You've got to work with precision. This one's lofted high in the air, and that is going to end up in the cradle. There it is of Armstrong. Haman picks it up. They work it right in front. I think that one hit the post. I don't think that's a goal. Nope. It stayed out of there. Correct. Aaron Poloni had a good look. And now Armstrong's going to get it back. They have dominated play here. And a run right into the middle, stepping out in front. And scoring was Claire Sandral, I believe. Number 18. I think it's Sandral. Or I think you're right. Junior, 10, now they're going to give it to uh, Gorgon. Bella Gorgon's going to get the goal. I, I thought it was Haman, but the, the blue numbers on red here in the twilight, a little, little bit hard right to read. But Number 10 it is. Yeah, Gorgon. And that's her second of the year. Time of that goal, 10-14. Armstrong dominating early in this one at Goodrich. We'll have girls lacrosse on Wednesday again. Centennial at Andover. 7 o'clock start Wednesday night here on QCTV. And another face-off win, and they move it ahead. Ashley Storley. Storley trying to get to the front. Put it on the ground. Armstrong controls. Well, set it up. They, they have been able to just walk right out in front. Well, it's, it's winning those face-offs and yep. owning those draws. So far, they're perfect at midfield at winning those draws, and they've been able to kind of hold possession and then make a deposit and pay it off here at the end. There's a quick shot, but <clears throat> I think we're going to get a penalty here in a free position at the 8-meter line, and that is... Not a good spot if you're the Anoka Tornadoes. Anoka staking 0 and 3 to start the season, but outscored 13 to 39. Their losses have come to Centennial, Spring Lake Park, and Rogers thus far. Sandral going to get a shot. Jaden Schultz, the goalie for Anoka. Sandral rushes forward, goes over the top. Missed everything on that one. Get Anoka trying to really escape a trap in their own end. Now the ground ball picked up the loose change. Here for Robbinsdale Armstrong. First three goals, Katie Poloni, she has it, works around the back. And gets it to the cutter in the middle, ball on the ground. Good D there by the Tornadoes as they knock it away. But Armstrong's going to hang on. 
We'll work the perimeter. Ducharme. Now it's right back on the ground. I think this is going to be another free position. And it's just as she was ready to take the shot, her stick was hit, and that ball was knocked loose, hence a chance here on this free possession. That is Ducharme there. Steps in and gets a goal. She went to the left and went right back over the shoulder of Schultz, 7-0 Armstrong. Ducharme, her first of the game. Second of the season. She ended up with eight goals last season. Did Ames Ducharme. Time of that goal, 12-25. So Armstrong running away early and Phase softs ground balls every phase. They they have had an advantage, and Anoka just hasn't had. They, they've had a couple of looks and some time in the attack zone, but Armstrong playing very well here at Goodrich tonight. Had a chance to stop by and watch uh, Anoka girls fast pitch team take on Andover. Ended up to be a 10-3 win for the Huskies in that one. Some great softball. Player goes down, ends up with Jaden Schultz, the Anoka goalie. They'll lob it out to the outside. Hits the ground, picked up by the Tornadoes. Good job there, and Anoka's going to move forward. And running ahead is... Jacobson, it looks like. Yeah, Caden's Jacobson. Jacobson, the sophomore. Jacobson goes in behind the net. 12 to go, half number one. Armstrong leading at 7-0. Poloni three to lead. She had the first three of the game. That is a pure hat trick. First, not only three in a row, but the first, first three. three of the game. That's that's a big deal. Looking for probably Layla Alm here, but not a lot of movement right now or cutters. There's finally Alm who makes a cut, moves right to left. Yelly out on top. St. Hilaire wearing 18 here on the near side. Try to move to the front. Good D by Armstrong. And Steve, we talked about the last game, but I got a hunch that thing is coming to fruition, and that is a, a time clock. Right. And, and when, when you get into the attack zone, the clock will start. There's one off the post by the Tornadoes. That, that may have hit the upright or the crossbar. Still on the ground right in front. Dangerous spot. Tornado's trying to gain control over there. Maya Olsen after it, couldn't get it. And now Armstrong is going to move the other way. So, okay, had some zone time, couldn't get a good look, though. Under 11 minutes to go, here come the Falcons the other way, quickly down the field. They move right to the front. That shot skips wide. That was Poloni that moved right in front. I think she went behind her head for that shot to try to go low side. And there's one that makes it into the net. So she was trying to sweep that one out across yep. away from the line. She took a couple of sweeps to try to clear it. Could not. Yeah, let's see who's going to get credit for it. Goal, Armstrong. And I think that might go to Poloni. She was just, the nearest. I think it fell out of her stick. Yeah. Yeah, right. and then Poloni's the kind of like, wow, yep. look at that. Um, it, it's unofficial, but why not? Poloni, her fourth. She was she was the nearest in our replay. Time of that goal, 14.36. So she's got four. So on, on the own goal, typically, and it, they probably could have gone that way, you, you probably go to the player with proximity, and that was Poloni. This one popped into the air and caught on the fly by Armstrong. That's pretty play as they move into the middle. And that's Rettelsheimer. And then she gets hit right on that eight meter line. She's probably going to get a free position here. And they're going to move it out. And it is indeed Carly Rettelsheimer. And they're going to actually move her back to the 12. She'll give it up on the left. Nice feed. And another goal for Armstrong. And on that goal, it's going to be 
Claire Hansen. Strong, number 23, Claire Hansen. Second of the year for Hansen. She's that was a, quite a feed. That was, and she tucked that away very precisely. As you can see, lower 90 of that net. Poof. Tough to come up with that clean while they're in motion, traffic in front, and for Claire Hansen, second goal of the season for her. Time of the goal, 15.09, right back to the middle of the field. And Armstrong really mixing it up. Head coach, Emily Voidcheck, sending a lot of people out there and can't have too many people to win faceoff. Sandra into the middle, works over to the right. Yeah, we haven't even seen Sandra really get into the flow. She has a champ there. Again, she had 19 goals last season, but you can see she's ready to get herself evolved into this game. That one skips wide. Another ground ball right in front, and Armstrong's going to control and set it up over on the right side. They move cutters through. They get it in front, and fanning on it was Armstrong. Had it pop out of the stick. Anoka right back the other way. That's Jacobson. And now it's picked up there by Olsen. Olsen with a good run. Can't get a lane to take a shot. Tries to cut back out in front. Under nine to go on the half. Armstrong the first nine in the game. Tornado's trying to get on the board. Rickley with it. Moves in front. That shot goes over the top. That'll be awarded a free possession. Or yeah, excuse me, did, free position. Did she get inside that line? It looks like she will. She'll be over on that far edge of the eight-meter line. That'll be St. Hilaire who's overcoming uh, an ACL injury from last year, also a captain on the squad. Let's see if she can cut into this goose egg. Running right in front, pops out of there. Boy, college just such a good job of yeah, she great squared angle. Up, squared up on that uh, shot. Got low, didn't uh, secure it, but she did obstruct it. Kendall St. Hilaire moved right in. Here's another chance. Round ball. That was knocked out of the stick of Moore. But I will tell you, she's got an art to that role as goalie, does uh, Lydia College. And that one on the ground picked up on the fly, and I think that's Sandral who picked it up, and she begins her run. Here's Sandral. She's got room. She's going to get to the front. Shot over the top. Oh, she'd love that one back, Joe. Boy, those long wow. athletic strides, and I'm yeah. telling she was ready to make a deposit back of the net on that one, just over the top. Yeah, it was a terrific run, and you could see she had a lane to get to the front of the net. And there's an Armstrong Falcon getting to the front and scoring again. And that time it's going to be Jenna Hominer's second of the game. Number 14, senior Jenna Hominer. Yep, and Hamann picks up, as I mentioned, she had 30 goals last season, 31 assists, her second goal tonight, her fourth of the season. And we're at uh, a 10 nothing lead here for this uh Falcon squad already 2 and 0 this season. Mentioned yep. they put up 208 goals last year. Yeah, they, they, there is no doubt based on what I've seen, they will be a conference champion contender in the Northwest Suburban this year. Uh, I think Maple Grove, obviously the, the favorite, uh, Centennial Andover, this Armstrong team right in that mix. Maple Grove really handled Andover but Andover came back and beat a good Elk River Zimmerman team to go 2-1, and one, and we'll see them on Wednesday night against Centennial. That'll be a good matchup Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. But Armstrong, the real deal for sure. And we got a ground ball, and the Falcons are going to hang on. This is Briella Anderson, midfielder. And Briella Anderson also played goalie for about three, four games last year for Armstrong. She was 2-0 and oh as a goalie. Armstrong, Anderson just pushes her way in front and scores. Well, Anderson certainly tallied some goals last season, coming out playing in front of the ball as well. She now picked up her fourth goal of the season. I mean, 
What an athlete. She had 24 goals last year, then also played goal from time to time. And uh, boy, 25 goals, or excuse me, 24 last year, now her fourth of the season. And uh, boy, they just keep bringing it one wave after another. And then on top of it, she's going to take this draw. Yeah, and, and she, she's been out there as much as anybody on their team. And this time, Anoka controls. Good job by the Tornadoes. This is Moore the other way. Good run. Pops out of her stick. And that came inside the 12, and she's going to get an opportunity. So here's a chance for Anoka sitting up on her right. Annie Yelly is going to step in. Watch out from behind. Now send it out into the middle. And now it's Yelly here on the left. Yelly trying to make a move, trying to find a lane to shoot. And she got bumped inside the eight. I think she's going to get a free position here. That was a good move by Yelly. Got hit up high. Yep, she made a quick cut. Got enough of a gap and a space to get a stride or two inside that eight. And now she's mentioned she will get this free possession, uh, position. Two goals on the year. Can she make it three? College of goalie steps in, and that one's knocked away. She's going to get another shot. I, I think she's going to get another one here. And, yes, she will. Yeah, they, they, that, that was another penalty on Armstrong, so Yelly another chance. They close in on four to go in the half. Steps in, shoots, saved by College. Holy cow. That was a good save. Cat Cut it all the way. Quickness. Whoa. Joe like quickness. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Not Baloney. when it comes to picking up a tab, but uh, other than that. Uh, yeah, you get alligator arms there, Joe. So I, I've it. noticed that. Here's Aaron Poloni. Goal line extended to the right. But did you notice, Steve, that pressure? What did that pressure stem from, from, from Anoka? Winning the draw yep. at midfield. Absolutely. That was the first time they, they won the draw at midfield. Good move into the middle downstairs. And another goal. Under the garage door. And I think that could have been Ducharme, and it is. Ducharme her second. That was pretty. She just would not be denied. Ducked under and scores. Well, they have such a wealth of scores on this Falcon squad. And it just goes to show you, you have upperclassmen last year that produced for the Falcons. But you always have those underclassmen ready to get their chance. And uh, <clears throat> you can see many of them taking that opportunity already this year in the third game. Here's the strange thing about this season for lacrosse. They're done in a month. That's when the, yeah. the end of the regular season is through on May 24th. In fact, the last game of the regular season will be against Elk River for the Falcons. That was Anderson on the draw, and it's picked up, moving the other way. Storley. Storley sends it right back to Anderson in the middle. Gets bumped, still has it. Her shot, and a goal sneaks it inside that far post. Another goal for Anderson. That was impressive. I mean, did you see the small pocket? Yep. The small window that she had to try to find, and she out just inside the post. Her second goal of the game. So she's been doing it all. Winning faceoffs, moves right down the field. 2-0 as a goalie last minutes, season. Thirteen to nothing with uh, under two to play. Anderson out there again. Alm trying to gain control, and Oka does. Alm into the middle, goes down low, blocked by College. Good, good show. Boy, I by thought, Alm. Hey, Alm looking for that goal. I thought for sure he was going to find an avenue and find the back of the net. Good read by College, went down low, made a couple of nice saves to deny Anoka. Now in front. Mountain pops out of the stick. And here comes Sandral, Claire Sandral. What a run. Jeez. Right down the field. Sandral gives it up. 
and that goes through. Rare mistake by Armstrong in an almost perfect first half. They get it back. Moving right to the front and scoring just like that. There's Armstrong. This may and that's going to be Aaron Poloni. He's going to get. Junior number four, Aaron Poloni. A Poloni party continues. Reignited here. With. Uh, I, second. I doubt that they get this face off in the action. seconds remaining. Yeah, because they've got to get everybody set, get it teed up. Sandral out there to take the draw. It looks like Alm for the Tornadoes. That will do it. All Armstrong here in the first half. Katie Poloni starts the game with a pure hat trick. She has four in the half. Armstrong has dominated. Half number two coming up from Goodrich in a moment here on QCTV.
And welcome back to Goodrich Field. The Robbins Tail Armstrong leading in Oka 14 0 at the half. Katie Poloni had three goals to start the game. And now as for her sister, Erin Poloni has a couple of games. Brielle Anderson has two. Jenna Haman has a couple. Uh, also, Ducharme has a couple of goals as well. And when Anoka has been in the attack zone, Lydia College has done a nice job in that. Armstrong, the real deal, 2-0 and and dominating in this one. Well, they certainly have the each end of this field covered tonight. Yeah. Uh, I've enjoyed watching Lydia College. And not a lot of action on that end, but her technique and her footwork to square up on each of those shots. They've had some great scoring opportunities and she had shut them down. There's a reason why she went 11 and four last season, 722 minutes and the goals against of about 6.9. Yeah, and it looks like college is gonna come out. We're gonna get uh, the other goalie. And I, I just wanna confirm that, that college is coming out and no, no, college is out there again. Last wearing thing number you want to see yeah. somebody do is leave college. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, well, I it's going it. so well for her. I, I did it. Just to, you know, stop college altogether. But uh, I, well, I was asked to leave. 14-0 <laughs> Armstrong, half number two underway on a cool night. But, hey, uh, the wind is down and the setting sun across the way. Again, it's a control off of that face off. Armstrong's done a nice job on the ground balls tonight as well. That was Gorgon. Gorgon had a goal in the first half. And they move it around beautifully. Another ground ball picked up by Armstrong in the attack zone. And they're going to move toward the net. Out there, Jaden Schultz. Schultz in the net. And, and Schultz has made some saves in this game. Uh, now granted, Armstrong, they, they've just been able to walk right in on her. Not much Jaden Schultz can do about that. Tornadoes turn it the other way at midfield. Trying to force that turnover. Ella Hennis fighting for it. Still battling. Hennis is going to pick it up. And Anoka is going to hang on. A little too aggressive by Armstrong there as Cheyenne Oja converged. Hennis sends it ahead. Ground ball. And it comes right into the stick there of Hennis again. Hennis trying to move it forward, and then it's picked off in the air by Haman. And now Armstrong's going to move it. They, they move the ball so beautifully laterally before they move it forward. And here they come, and Claire Sandral right up the middle of the field. Great speed, powers her way in front and scores. That was terrific rush by Sandral. That she has a, I mean, each of her strides as she goes longer, they get stronger. And I'll tell you, she has put up some big numbers last season, and she continues to do it with the goal. This a big goal for her. 19 goals last season for her, and I want to say her seventh of the season. Yeah, and Sandra with, with her first tonight, but. That, that was just a terrific run where she wasn't going to be denied and uh, used her length to her advantage there to get a great shot off. Running time, of course, Armstrong leading at 15-0. 22-30 remaining in the game. And Anoka picks up a ground ball. That was a nice effort there by Kendall St. Hilaire, one of the captains for the Tornadoes. Here's a chance for Anoka. That's Kristoff. That one goes wide, and I think Anoka's going to hang on here as they got down to the end line first. But that was a good good rush by Kristoff. Yeah, one goal, one assist so far this season for the sophomore. She snapped off a laser-like shot just off the mark. Carver sends it over. They try to move it in front. And now they set up shop. Here's Kristoff again on the right. Moves to the 12-meter line and then backs away. 
aggressive play that time. Yeah, and they're, they're going to get an opportunity here. Not This is at the 12-meter fan, so this will not be a free position for Kristoff. She'll have to give it up and now sends it out on top, and that's Alm. Alm spinning. Double team comes. She'll have to back out of there. Alm still trying to find an alley to shoot and can't. Now comes out on top. This is Carver. Carver spinning. Works her way in. We got a ball on the ground. That came very close to the 8-meter line. And this is going to be an opportunity for Lily Carver to score goal number one this year. So Lily Carver, the sophomore. And she beat Lydia at college. Steps in, shoots. Oh, off the post. Far side. That was a terrific shot. I'm right back at it. Great shot by our crew right off the post, Joe. Oh, we caught that one perfect right square off of that post. I thought it would find itself just inside that post, but uh, denied just yet. Ground ball. Anoka controlling. And a player goes down. Anoka's going to grab it again. That's Kristoff out of there. Out on the field is Yelly trying to get open. You can see Yelly moving right in front of the goaltender, waiting for a pass. Catch, shoot. She goes down. I thought if they were celebrating a goal at first, but it didn't uh, look that way after a couple of seconds. But I think it may come down awkward. She got a big uh, shot ankle. there. And she she's still trying to gather herself and, after that collision. Let's see mind, it here. She missed all of last year with an ACL. Oh, and that eventually went, went in, in. But that's what I saw. And, I, uh, I wonder if if it was called before the shot, though. And now Yelly's going to head off. Scoring update from the East Bay Area. The Anokas East Black Girls won by a score of 8 to 6 over El River. Yeah, so Girls, here it is. Five. Yeah, she got it away and then went down, and I'm not sure what the call is and now it, it is a free position for Anoka stepping in having it knocked away was Alm another tornado goes down and that was Layla Alm getting decked under 20 to go in the game Anoka would love to get on the board here it needs a couple of minutes to kind of shake it off and Boy, get that head cleared after that collision. So Alm's going to set up right there at the 8 meter extended. You, you can kind of see where the line ends. And now Alm has an opportunity. College holds her ground. She tried to shoot that one. It was a shot attempt, so Anoka's going to hang on to it. They had two players back deep. Hustling back there was Kendall St. Hilaire. You can see her in your picture there, also coming into the picture, Amaya Olson, and she's got the ball, and Olson's going to move it forward. So, no good trying to get on the board. They trailed 14-0 at the half. Here's Olson trying to work to the front. Good D by Armstrong. Catch and shoot. That was St. Hilaire again. She did, and, and if you saw college, she moved from the left side to the right side, got down low. I think that went off her leg instead of her stick. Lydia College, not, not a real big goalie, but she does a terrific job, Joe. You said it, you know, great read on the ball, great stick position. Yep, exactly. Very agile. This is Carver. Carver's done a nice job. Now it's Alm. And Alm last year put up some pretty impressive numbers with 26 goals. Alm spinning to the eight, inside the eight, can't get a shot away. As Armstrong converges, here's Olson getting pressure back there, trying to work her way to the front and get free, and pops it further out. And there's Alm over there, working her way to the middle. You can see 17 and a half remaining in the game. Alm catching, 
and then it had to pop out of her stick at the last second. Mm. That was a great scoring opportunity. And now Armstrong's going to turn the other way. Well, that was too bad. Wani, they get uh, notification to proceed. Ground ball. Tornado's trying to scoop it up. That was Webb back there. Couldn't get it. And now a chance for Armstrong. They move to the front. Nice pass. Anderson a catch. Spinning, shooting, and ends up in the crease area, and Jaden Schultz grabs it. She has someone right in her face as she sends it off to the near side. Let's see, Shoknek gets it ahead, puts it on the ground, but the Tornadoes are going to get there first. That was Carver, sends it into the middle, trying to grab on the fly, Kristoff. And now Kristoff has it, moves forward right in front and then gets hit around the eight. And this is going to be an opportunity for the Anoka Tornadoes inside the eight. Hmm. And actually, a Falcon for the first time in the game is going to take gets a knee yellow, down. Huh? Yeah, that'll be... Sharon Derge, a junior defender. Derge is going to go over. You, you don't you don't see that a lot. A player sent off in the girls' game. Here's Kristoff right in the middle on the eight. Steps and shoots. College got a piece of it. How about that, Joe? Mm. Take a look here. Yeah. What transpired? You'll see Derge hit her right. There that, and knock her down, yeah. That's that uh, stick across. That is the Morton Minnesota greeting, isn't it, that Joe? That is. Yeah. A handshake yeah. and then a yeah. stick like that. It's just, you know. It's, uh, Welcome to Morton. If you live on the other side of the tracks, <laughs> closer to the granite quarries. Well, isn't that your hometown? It is, yeah. yes. Yeah, welcome to Morton. <laughs> Here's a stick in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, the sign they had, it but you came into Morton because it had two granite quarries. Yeah. Was, it's nice. Morton is nice. Yeah. I kid you not. <laughs> but, like yeah, it. then the stick came right yeah. after that. Yeah, False well. sense of security. Bam. Coming up on 15 to go in the game. Armstrong in the attack zone. Anoka did have some good zone time. Here's a chance. Player stepping to the front. That's going to be a free position for sure for the Armstrong Falcons. Player got hit up high, and that's going to be an opportunity for Mickelberg, Gabby Mickelberg, senior defender. Mickelberg's going to get a chance to get on the board here, I believe. Let's see. And you can tell man. she's ready because usually she's playing defense and doesn't get these free <laughs> positions. Not at she's all. She's ready to let her fly. Let's Look at see. That. She lets it fly, and it's saved by Schultz. And Schultz is going to scoop it up in the crease area. Armstrong puts a player right in her face. She'll get the clear. And that was a nice clear by Schultz. Here come the Tornadoes as they move it forward. And they're trying to get some positivity at the end of this game. And Olsen begins her run. Maya Olsen tries to work her way toward the net. Goes in behind. And will come all the way around. Good run by her. Gets to the front and goes down. And that's going to draw a free position. Good job by her. She just wouldn't be denied. Another Morton hello there on the stick. <laughs> yeah. As Anoka trying to create that yeah. Morton momentum. And trying to put something up here for the Tornadoes. I, I like that Morton hello. Olsen shot. She had it blocked from the side. And it's picked up by Armstrong and the Falcons with a good clear. I'm amazed Maybe get around the other way. Yeah, I'm amazed how quickly Robinson Armstrong could block and deflect those free positions. Yeah, they they really converge. They, they, they've got a strategy on how they want to converge on those free positions. And it's almost as though they anticipate the release of that shot coming out of what level. Or that launch angle, but uh, interesting to see it. So keep in mind, Robinsdale Armstrong last year started their season 9-0. and uh, And then uh, they hit a wall just because of the competition in which, hey, they faced Wyzetta, Andover, along with Elk River, 
and Maple Grove, and they had dropped three of their next four. Carver tried to get to the front, had it knocked away on the ground. Anoka trying to gain possession, but it looks like Armstrong's going to get to that ground ball. And early in this game, they, they flat out dominated. Face-offs, ground balls. That, that's been a huge key for them. Yep, that one's going to roll. Ball, and you see it. Uh, they also took a loss to Centennial last year, did at Robbinsdale Armstrong, and that's who we're going to get a chance to see Wednesday when Centennial and Andover clash on Wednesday night lights. But Andover, keep in mind, had a huge win last week over Elk River. Yes, to move to two and one. After taking one on the chin against Maple Grove, they get it in the front to the front, and that one blocked away Armstrong. Good ball movement right in front of the net. It didn't lead to a goal. Denied uh, by Schultz. There's a shot and a goal in front. Right after I said denied by Schultz, they find the back of the net for the goal again here for the Falcons. And it looks like Ava Cole, a sophomore. And Cole is celebrating her first goal of the year right there. And she gets it, shoots it, and you can say... Yeah, she's pretty excited about that. So Cole gets the goal. She walked in, not contested a whole lot to get in to that great scoring location and burying it back of the net. It's Cole, and now they extended the lead to 16 nothing. Anoka's had opportunities to get on the board, and they had, I would say, two or three good scoring chances in the first half. And then they've had a couple of good scoring chances here in the second half, but it has been denied by Lydia College. Yeah, the one goal that looked like it did go in was the one that was called back after Helly yeah. had put it in. It bounced yeah. and went off the stick. And we, we haven't seen and Annie since, and now she's on the field right there giving chase. She was shaken up, knocks it away. Good play by Yelly. And she runs into her own player and goes down. Yeah, she just ran into St. Hilaire. Everybody's okay. And now the tornado's back at it as we close in on 11 minutes in the game. It's a scary moment there. There's two key players for the tornadoes. Now here's Yelly just outside that 12-meter line. Works to the right of the fan. Now steps into the middle. Good move. Got a shot away and got bumped. And... She's going to get a free position. She took a shot as she moved into the front. Well, hey, Falcons, a very physical team. They yep. will not allow or give up a, t a stride without it being contested on that field. And you've seen Anoka with some golden opportunities. But here's another interesting look from this angle. Let's see how closely they close this gap. Yeah, Lee, a shot blocked by College. Can she scoop it up? Yes, she did. Boy, and Look at uh, that outlet, too. Well, and, and they made it difficult. I, I think you've just got to take a quick step and shoot that there's no extra time. The way Armstrong defends that, Falcons right back the other way. We got a whistle. And I think we are going to get a timeout here. Yes, we will. With 10 08 to go in the game. 14 0 Armstrong at the half. Uh, Sandral and Cole. Take with goals at, here. Yeah, let's take a look at what's coming up here. We just kicked off the week also, Northwest Suburban Conference. Champlin they, Park, good team. Got it, Maple Grove, Armstrong, Hales. Everyone contesting. Again, it's uh, points versus for each win. So uh, there you get a look up top. Centennial, the next uh, team Andover will be facing on Wednesday. Spring Lake Park, Elk River, Zimmerman. Again, a lot of these teams, you see it in softball too, in baseball. Having trouble getting that season going, and, and they'll be playing a lot of makeup games along the way. But right now, um, it's been pretty contested. Meanwhile, you get a look at the Class uh, 4A here, look at the uh, rankings. And uh, again, the teams from the South kind of in a good position as they always are, it seems, Steve, with girls across. At Chan, Prior Lake, Benil, Edina. Stillwater is program, and Stillwater for the second year in a row is going to be the host site for the state tournament in lacrosse. They got a great stadium out there at Stillwater. 
uh, the home of the Ponies, Minnetonka there, Rosemount, uh, Blake, Eden Prairie. And th this is still a game where the northern suburbs, the northwest suburban in particular, trying to break through. And I, I would say the girls are a little bit ahead of the boys when it comes to that um, and breaking through. But uh, it is it is part of the process uh, to, to ultimately get to state tournament and start winning state tournament games yeah. is the next step. And Andover almost did that against yep, Rosemont that's right. last year. They, I think 10-8 Rosemont Correct. won that one. It was an outstanding game. And that is one of those traditional powers from the South Suburban. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubt in girls across. This conference is making inroads and not far away. Especially those top tier teams you've seen consistently over the past few years. Armstrong powers her way in front. I think that was Sandral again. And she only has one goal tonight, but such a strong player. And actually, it's Anderson. Anderson's going to set up here at the eight meters. So let's see if she just lets it fly. And she does and scores. That was a dart. <laughs> she unleashed wow. a laser. Third of the game. Wow. Wow. That, the hat trick for her. That That's quite a shot. Oh, my gosh. And, and she did what you had maybe suggested Anoka think about doing with their next. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I think trying to begin your run, it's just the step and shoot. I, I think particularly in the middle. Uh, on these free positions, uh, it, it appears to be that strategy. Just let it go. Don't let the D uh, converge. It's uh, equivalent to a slap shot in hockey, right? And uh, versus a wrister. And I'll tell you, she had some torque and velo on that uh, shot. Impressive goal. So Anderson, her third. The team lead still. Katie Poloni, who had the first three of the game, she has four overall. They have certainly spread it out. And here's Anderson, who's taken a lot of face-offs for the Armstrong Falcons and head coach Emily Wojciech. And I know for the Anoka Tornadoes, Ellie Heinrichs wants to, wants to get a goal on the board. They've had some opportunities and some attack zone time here in the second half, but it, it starts winning face-offs. Here's Anderson again over on the left. Sends it to the side, trying to get it in front. That's blocked away by uh, the goalie, Jaden Schultz. Did a good job there. Schultz has it in the netting. They've got someone right in front of her again, and that is Anderson. And now it's Joe Connect Picks it up. Tries to work it ahead. Another ground ball. Under eight to go in this game. And now Armstrong's going to control and trying to move to the front. Cook. Ground ball, and that one's picked up by the goalie again. Jaden Schultz. Over to the side. Is that one going to go out of bounds? And Armstrong's going to get it right back. Kicking it back, you can see. Trying to work it around the perimeter. Earlier in the game, you could see that uh, Armstrong certainly had, you know, much more aggressive cuts inside, trying to create that spacing. And here now you get a chance for them to kind of see and, and bring some new players in with this lead. Yeah, out, out there at the moment, Claire Sandral, but... Cole who had a goal here in this half is out. Under seven to go in this game. All Armstrong here tonight. There's a shot that goes over the top, and I think Armstrong's going to win the raise to the end line and hang on to it. They're going to move to 3-0, and oh, and they are going to take on Rogers at home at Armstrong. They have a really nice facility at Armstrong, just off 169 to the west. Player gets to the front, knocked down there by the goalie. Good job by Jaden Schultz. She's 
you know, held her own and, and done some good things in that. Even though the team's down 17 there you say, yeah, come on. But she, she, has, she has made some good plays in her first game in net this year. Here's Olsen. Olsen pushing away to the front. Tried to get his shot away. Still on the ground. Tornado still have it. Moving up through, and I think uh, Robbinsdale did make a goalie change during that last time out as well. Yeah, college is out of there, and let's see if we can get a number. The, the other regular goalie is Ranshaw, Avery Ranshaw. Her save percentage impressive, 684. So they, they have a couple of good options. Ranshaw, a sophomore. And there's a shot and a goal, first for Anoka. And that is going to go to Annie Yelly, her third of the year. Congrats there, as I know it's, it probably feels like uh, treating the symptoms not the disease, but I'll tell you, just to get a goal and break that zero. Oh, no doubt. As I mentioned, and Annie Helly certainly with the hustle, her and uh, St. Hilaire have been near and around that net along with uh, Alm, but finally, nice to get that goal for Annie Helley. As you mentioned, Steve, her third of the season. She had six last year, and Anoka is in the books. And out there, Layla Alm trying to win a face-off for Anoka and continue their momentum. Uh, we At running time, time of that goal for Yelly came at about 20 minutes elapsed here in half number two. It is 17-1, to one, but... Good shot by her, and she went down hard. That one popped in the air, and it's grabbed on the fly by the Tornadoes. And here they come the other way. Here's Kristoff. Kristoff begins her run, gives it up on the right. Alm knocks it down, picks up the ground ball, and see if Anoka can make it two in a row here. Alm spinning into the middle. Double team comes. I'll have to pass out of there and give it up to Kristoff. Toward the net, ricochets out of there. Ground ball picked up by the Armstrong Falcons. Derjay. A couple of posts that uh, the Tornadoes have hit tonight. Derjay is going to get it over on the far side, try and work it up the sideline, and move it toward midfield. Ball right back on the ground. And Armstrong grabs it. They finally move it to midfield and get it across on the run a little bit too far. Coming up on three to go in the game. Noka's going to fall to 0-4. Tornadoes take on Blaine here at Goodrich on Wednesday night. Anderson tried to get it out in front, but it ends up on the goalie's stick. That is Jaden Schultz. Transition and a turnover here by Noka. Anderson side of the net, loses it. Goalie grabs it. Another good job by Jaden Schultz. She's made some nice plays like that. Sends it off to the right. It's caught, and the Tornadoes are going to clear. Get it toward midfield, right back on the ground. Armstrong turning the other way with 2.20 to go. Now over to the far side. Show connect. As I mentioned, it is Robbinsdale. They go to 3-0. and But last year they started 9-0. And had a tough end of the season. They really load really heavy at the end of the season with a tough schedule. They do it again this year because three of their last four games come against Wyzetta, Andover, and Elk River. And again, they end their regular season this year on May 24th against Elk River. So you want to make sure you're getting those core strengths and everyone hitting uh, full throttle by the time the near the end of the season hits. And there's Alm who takes a tough. Yeah, well, speaking of hit, yep. Alm got hit, knocked down. She's going to get a free position. We'll see if she can gather herself and take that shot. It looks like she's going to go to the sideline and come out of there. A little she went down up. hard. Yeah, a little shaken up. And uh, yeah. the thing you always worry about, <clears throat> you look at the legs and feet, but maybe that hard toss, you worry about a concussion. 
And we're going to see who's going to take this free position on that eight-meter line and trotting out of the field. Yeah, it is going to be Kristoff that's going to get a look. Let's see if she just does step and shoot here with the other goalie in there, Ranshaw. And there it is. Step and remedy. shoot. <laughs> yeah. It's like that dance move you taught me. Uh, <laughs> a crossover step and shoot. Nice. Kristoff. Goes low under the garage door that time and tallies the second goal here in just a few minutes for the Tornadoes. They pick up their second, uh, still a 15 goal deficit, but. Uh, yeah, good strategy though. I think when you get that free position at the eight right in the middle, just step and shoot, let it fly. Uh, don't let that, especially as quick as Armstrong has been, Joe. You pointed that out all night when Anoka's had that opportunity, they just, Get to the ball right away. Very physical team as well. So this will be a another good win for Armstrong. But uh, you know it feels good when you can end with a couple of goals if you're this tornado squad. Yeah, especially players like Kristoff and uh, getting the first goal of the game was Yelly right back the other way. Armstrong shot that's going to go through, and they're going to get it back. And just seconds remaining in this one. Armstrong cruised to a 14-0 lead at the half. They've outscored Anoka 3-2 here in half number two. Here's a ground ball. Comes all the way in to the goalie, Jaden Schultz. Schultz is going to hang on. Now she's got to figure out where to go. And I like that strategy of getting someone in on the goalie and making it difficult to clear it out of there. And Armstrong's used that effectively. Here come the Falcons. Sandral, good move into the middle. Sandral right in and fires it over the top. Did you see that backhand? That was like a no look over her opposite shoulder on that shot attempt. That second time tonight, I think I've seen her get at that, but just missed it. But that was an impressive display of offense by Robinsdale Armstrong. Here's that last yeah. shot. If you take a look at it, watch her try to bring it reverse side. Wow. See that little ESPN -er. and she, she learned just that missed from it. Joe Rulo. She did. From uh, the school of hard knocks, uh, Morton. <laughs> and uh that was you impressive. have no other way to replay or release a shot like that when you're playing in Morton. Well it good look well, at the schedules coming up here quickly. Uh, for the Falcons, they play Rogers, Coon Rapids, Centennial, OPC, and then they're at Maple Grove on May 10th. That's for the Falcons. Meanwhile, the tornadoes. I have Blaine at home, and then they go to Champlain Park, take on a tough Elk River squad back here in Anoka. Then they travel to Andover and Chisago Lake. On tough the three in a row for the Tornadoes there. And here's what we've got coming up live and local Ramsey in the spotlight. And of course, we mentioned girls lacrosse on Wednesday night. That'll be Centennial at Andover. And I think you'll be there, and I'll be there, and you our great it. QCTV crew. And then we got some. Hardball. Baseball, hey, Champlin Park at Andover, and then some boys across Champlin Park right back here at Goodrich Field against Anoka on May Day. And it's always fun to work with you, Joe. Always fun to work with our great QCTV crew. I'm Steve Thompson. Once again, our final score tonight here at historic Goodrich Field. Armstrong beats Anoka 17-2. Girls across. Have a good evening.